What's cracking with your snack and snacker stars? It is me, me, the BRE, the man in the backwards hat, Brandon from the SAS, the Snack Food Appreciation Society. And ladies and gentlemen, I am back at Red Robin this week for the first time in a long time because they finally got something that piques my interest. That's right, they've got something that reminds me of the Dukes of Hazard because it's called the Barbecue Boss Hog Burger. Let's find out more about that right after this on OTR. You are looking live at Red Robin in Seven Corners Shopping Center here in Falls Church, Virginia. The Seven Corners section, not a lot going on there, but some trees. You got a Wendy's in the distance. Hey, if you're looking for a bargain, maybe go to Dress Barn or perhaps Off-Broadway Shoe. But we are here today to check out something from Red Robin, and that is contained within their brand new hot box proprietary burger protection hey this is new i haven't been to red robin in quite a while they used to have that little cardboard box with the perforation for the fries this is totally brand new let me go ahead and open this bad boy up clamshell style all right as you can see the burger is wrapped up in a protective foil diaper you got your fries there on the side let me go ahead and get this, the barbecue Boss Hog Burger, out of that diaper and show it to you a little more closely and a little bit more in depth. All right, so for a limited time, for $11.49, you can get this barbecue Boss Hog Burger. And what this basically entails is tangy barbecue pulled pork over an ancho marinated beef patty loaded with cheddar cheese, dill, pickle planks, tortilla strips, red onions, lettuce, and smoky camp pot, campfire mayo on a jalapeno cornmeal kaiser roll so a lot going on here this bad boy looks fully involved let's pull the crown off the bun and see what we got there's that lettuce they talked about you see it's coated in that campfire mayo there's the tortilla strips and then underneath there yes sir lots of barbecue pulled pork cheddar cheese got that ancho patty and there's the red onion and the pickles underneath Lots of stuff going on in this burger. Look at that dusted bun. That does look really good. And of course they have the fries too. Now, one thing I hadn't noticed, when you get fries to go now, they give you this little cup so that you can eat fries on the way home. There you go. So they've made them a little bit more, you know, bottomless, so to speak, in the to-go orders. I also got some of the reds all natural original seasoning probably put that on the fries all right guys i'll be right back to show you this barbecue boss hog burger more closely put it in my mouth and let you know what i think about it on this edition of otr all right gang i am back to take a look and a taste of this brand new barbecue boss hog burger wow that's a mouthful here at red robin for a limited time only here for the summer they brought out a whole line of barbecue products like uh they have kettle chips that are covered in barbecue uh, poor, pulled pork, so that's really cool. Uh, but this burger really got my attention. It's along the same lines of, you know, recently we did the review on the uh, rib burger at uh, Hardee's where they have that baby back rib on top of the burger. And then also, um, I've seen a lot of other places that have done things like this before with the pulled pork or maybe even uh, Philly steak on top of a burger. So people are stacking meats these days man i'm not gonna complain about that but let me show you this burger next to my noggin the way i always do give you the full focus and scope of that bad boy right there there you go looks really really tasty the only thing i would say is i don't like how they put the uh, campfire mustard on top or mayo rather on top of the lettuce that seems kind of odd to me but maybe they didn't want it to quite intermingle directly with the barbecue sauce that's in the pulled pork. I don't know. Let me go ahead and take a bite and let you know what I think about it. Wow is all I can say about that one, guys. That is a really tasty burger. Of course, when they asked me how I wanted it cooked, they asked, do you want some pink or no pink? I definitely wanted some pink. And for once, they didn't overcook the burger here at Red Robin. This particular location, generally overcooks the burgers but not this time really really good so let's build this thing from the bottom to the top the way we always do starting with the bun i love the cornmeal dusted bun now i said it's a whole uh jalapeno cornmeal dusted bun 
and I don't get a lot of evidence of that. Maybe just a tiny little bit of flavor in there, but no heat because of that for whatever reason. Maybe just that's how they planned it. Um, you get in there first of all, and you have that lettuce, which is a nice crisp leaf lettuce that's kind of been soaked in that campfire mayo. Now, I think I get now why they did that. Uh, they separated the mayo from the pulled pork because they wanted it to sort of uh, have its own experiences instead of blending together. And I actually agree with that because I got to taste both. And then through, you know, creating a fugue in my mouth of, you know, the, the mayo and the pulled pork and the lettuce, it absolutely brought home all the flavors I was looking for. Outstanding. Also... Once I got to the meat itself, that was really, really good. Um, I, I do taste a little bit of some kind of pepper going on in there. Couldn't really identify it as, of, as ancho if you were to put a gun to my head, but that's okay too. But it was really juicy and tasty. The pulled pork itself, guys, was not just some minced mess. It was actual chunks of pulled pork with lots of barbecue sauce. Really, really tasty, not too fatty. It blended really well, finally, with that mayo. And then also, once you chew up into the beef, two different meat experiences really explode. Um, the thing I liked also a lot was once that barbecue sauce and the pickle started reacting together. That was a really good flavor, too. Uh, very, very good all in all. The tortilla strips, I don't think, added anything to this equation, but that's okay. No big deal. I'm giving this, no matter what, a 100% Full thumbs up today on OTR as OTR is back on the road thanks to the generosity of a loved one. I am driving a car today that does not belong to me, but that is fine. We'll keep it going as long as we can. Stay tuned for the uh, stay tuned for the final Nova Pro report leading into American slang right after this if you want to. But there's also things that you have to do to keep up with us on the internet. Join our Facebook group by clicking on the link down below. Hundreds of the coolest people in the world are in our group, and you should be too. Why aren't you? Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at BrandonRikeSAS. And when you do that, make sure you use the hashtag Snack Society all day, every day, to let us know what you're eating, and that way you know what we're eating too. Then you want to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So in the meantime, in between time, Stay tuned for the Nova Pro preview, and I'll be right back right after this. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, fans, here we are with the last big Nova Pro report for American Slang 17 coming to you this Friday night, July 14th, from the Northern Virginia Jewish Community Center on Little River Turnpike in Fairfax, 8 o'clock bell time. The doors open at 7.30. You will see the big main event ladder match. The PWI Ultra J Championship will be suspended above the ring, and the champion, Chet Sterling will have to defend against his rival, Logan Easton LaRoe, the champion of the 1% and the Nova Pro Virginia Commonwealth Cup champion in this big ladder match. Nobody knows what will happen as it's the first ladder match in Nova Pro history and certainly the first one to come to the building that we're going to be in, the Jewish Community Center. Also, a big title for title match as the AIW Absolute champion Tim Donst takes on the WXW shotgun champion David Starr. Excellent uh, international action going on there as David Starr just won that WXW title over there in Germany. Uh, and of course, Tim Donst, a favorite at Nova Pro Wrestling, looking to defend his absolute title from AIW should be a great match. Also, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of champions, the brand new GFW, that's right, Global Force Wrestling, X-Division champion Sanjay Dutt will be taking on a rival of his, Matt Cross, who you may know as Lucha Underground's Son of Havoc. So that's a big cross-promotional match if you think about it that way. Huge, huge match right there. There's been a change to the card, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor Hendricks will no longer be appearing due to unforeseen circumstances. So taking her place will be Nova, Nova Pro favorite Brittany Blake making her return after a few months. She will take on the vicious Angelus Lane who has a goal of destroying Nova Pro Wrestling and I'm not really sure why. You'll also see Faye Jackson in action and she'll be taking on a local favorite 
in action as well, who's making her debut in Nova Pro Wrestling. Also, ladies and gentlemen, you will see the Sandwich Squad. You will see Eric Royal. He's apparently running the gauntlet to see if he can get to Logan Easton Leroux. Also, ladies and gentlemen, appearing on the show, none other than a big grudge match as the Cutie and the Beast tag team continues to explode. Innocent Isaiah will take on his former partner, Bo Crockett, in a huge grudge match. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot more action going on. Lots of debuts. We're going to see a lot of action go down this Friday at Nova Pro, American Slang 17. If you want to find out more, check out their Facebook page or follow them on Twitter at VA Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be there. The rest of the Snack Society will be as well. You should be there too. Catch the action.